The minimum variance hedge is the hedge position that when combined with the underlying exposure produces a net portfolio that minimizes the variance or volatility of the net portfolio. So in order to illustrate the minimum variance hedge, I've replicated John Hull's example 3.3, where the scenario is an airline with a plan to purchase 2 million gallons of jet fuel one month in the future. And so their underlying exposure, their price risk is to the price of jet fuel. They may be concerned that over the next month, the price of jet fuel increases, which would be an increase to their cost. And so they could put on a cross hedge by using heating oil futures contracts. And it's a cross hedge, not a hedge, because currently they can't get a futures contract on jet fuel, the same commodity that they'd like to hedge. But heating oil, the price of heating oil, is highly correlated to the price of jet fuel. And so they can use the heating oil futures contract. And when the commodity is not the same, but it's instead just correlated, we call that a cross hedge. And so to figure out what the best cross hedge is, the minimum variance hedge, we only need three pieces of information which are calculated based on, in this case, a historical window of price change data. So 15 months here, of dollar price changes in the first column, the dollar F, that is delta of the futures price. So in this case, that's the monthly change in the futures price of the heating oil that's being used to hedge. And in the second column, delta S, that's delta spot, is the monthly change in the price of jet fuel. So you can see in the first month for each of them for the heating oil, it was a, 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 an increase of a little over two cents per gallon on the heating oil. And in the first month, uh, an increase of almost three cents on the jet fuel. So 15, a series of 15 months allows us, of course, to calculate a standard deviation or volatility for each of them. And so I'm just using Excel's Stand, sample standard deviation dot s stands for the sample when in doubt when we're not when in doubt about a population or sample standard deviation it's a good idea i think to just use the sample standard deviation because in most cases that's the right choice realistically um, this is a unique case in that we're going to use a ratio between them and the Samp the n minus one that's part of the sample standard deviation is going to cancel and it's not going to matter if we use a sample or a population standard deviation. That's pretty cool. But I'm using the sample standard deviation, so you can see here it's a little over uh, three pennies or three cents as the monthly standard deviation for the dollar change in the heat price of heating oil or the futures price of heating oil. And here a little uh, 2.6 pennies per uh, as, as a monthly standard deviation or a volatility of the change in the jet fuel price. And then I can also, of course, just use Excel to calculate the correlation between these two variables over 15 months. And you can see it's very high, 0.928. Uh, we rarely see this high a correlation in practice. And so those three pieces of information are enough to calculate the minimum variance hedge. And over here, I plotted the regression to just to highlight the fact, the simple fact that the minimum variance hedge ratio is the same as the slope in the regression. It's the same as the beta in the regression. And the regression is, you can see I've got that label up here. It's a regression of the spot price against the futures price. That means the change in spot price, again, price of jet fuel is the dependent against the change in the futures price of heating oil on the x-axis as the independent. So we can see that the slope given by beta, if we're just careful to note that it's the beta of the spot with respect to the futures, then that beta is covariance 
SF divided by, we just want to be careful here about the denominator. It's covariance divided by variance, but it's specifically the variance of the change in the futures price. And then, so in the denominator, that, that covariance breaks down further into correlation between spot and futures multiplied by volatility of spot or standard deviation multiplied by volatility of futures, right? Classic relationship here. Covariance is the product of correlation in both volatilities. And we've got the same variance of the change in future in the denominator. And that means that one of these uh, standard deviations of the future change in future price cancels. And we're left with this beta, which is the slope of the regression line, is the same as the minimum variance hedge ratio, which is given by correlation between change in spot and change in future, multiplied by what we could call, or what is called sometimes, the cross volatility. Change in uh, volatility of spot divided by volatility of futures price, right? A slope of the regression line beta is equal to correlation multiplied by cross volatility. Just want to make sure that we've got the, you want to just want to, the uh, only trick about that is making sure that we've got the right uh, spot in the numerator and futures price, change in futures price in the denominator. And so uh, I'll just erase that and go back to the actual calculation here. That means our minimum variance hedge ratio here is the correlation multiplied by the cross volatility, making sure to get the spot in the numerator, it's 026, and the standard deviation of the futures price in the denominator, point, oh wait, point zero three one, right, equals our 0 0.7 repeating. And so that's the Slope of the regression line, you can see here, Excel's generated it for me, and it's the minimum variance hedge ratio. It's the same thing. And so then how do we use that? Well, that's just the final step. We um, plug that in to this formula, which tells us the optimum number of contracts is equal to the hedge ratio. So that in that case, that's our 0 0.7 repeating multiplied by the quantity QA goes in the numerator. And so that's just the underlying exposure. How many gallons does the airline plan to purchase divided by the size of the futures contract? In this case, 42,000 gallons is the size specification of the heating oil futures contract. We don't, we don't have, the airline has no control over that. That's part of the contract that trades on the CME. And so that sizes here the optimal hedge and gives us a result of just about 37 contracts. And so what does that mean? Well, the airline, recall, has a plan to purchase these 2 million gallons in the future. That's their exposure. And so that deserves a what we'd call a long hedge, a long position in the futures contract. So this formula is telling us that the minimum variance hedge is a long position in 37 contracts. And that's because if the price of the jet fuel does go up, right, that's going to cost the airline more, but then the long position in the futures contract will produce a gain for them, a profit, which will then offset and help them to minimize their cost. And, and what does that minimization really entail? Well, that's why I've plotted here. I've just plotted the uh, volatility of the net position. So on the y-axis here, I have a dollar amount of the volatility of the net position. And the net position is simply, it's a portfolio in two assets, really. It's the underlying exposure, the purchase of 2 million gallons of jet fuel, plus the hedge, which is now a, which is a long position in some number of futures contracts. So the exposure plus the hedge is the net position. And then so here on the y-axis, I've just plotted the volatility of that net position in dollar amount. 
easy calculation because it's just a two asset portfolio, but I've plotted it as a function of the hedge ratio. So here at zero, that's just the naked exposure of the plan to purchase the 2 million gallons. If the, oh here, if the historical volatility is correct, that would be the volatility of that underlying exposure. Then as we move to the right here, the hedge ratio increases and that implies that we're simply, uh, that the airline is simply entering an uh, increasing number of long contracts in the heating oil futures contract, right? So this is, as we move to the right, that's an increase in the use of the hedge, more contracts. And you can see here, as this airline enters more long contracts, the volatility, standard deviation of the net position decreases until at such time that we start to enter into here what, what we could call overhead territory. The local minimum here is the minimum variance hedge. So the, two, the net position of the exposure plus the hedge is a two asset portfolio with its own standard deviation or volatility and the minimum variance hedge is just solving for the local minimum. In other words, suggesting for the airline the hedge it can put on if it wants to minimize the volatility of the exposure plus the hedge. So that's what um, that's really what this means in action for the airline. So that's minimum variance hedge. I hope that's helpful. Thank you.